Welcome to Spooky News from Spooky Ventures for September 25th, 2020. We're well into spooky season, officially into the fall, and just about into October. For those of us who live for this time of year, it's showtime. Before we get into the news, I'd like to include a quick reminder. Spooky Ventures is supposed to be interactive, so be sure to comment. Feel free to contact us if you know of anything you'd think we should cover. If you're a creator of spooky stuff and would like to do an interview or submit materials for a review, please get in touch. In fact, that brings up another item. We recently published an interview with author Dan Clefsted where he talks about his upcoming vampire novel Fiona's Garden and even reads an excerpt for us. If you haven't already caught that interview, please check it out. Also, we've had some cool spooky reviews published recently. I reviewed the entire Gamera Collection Blu-ray set from Arrow Films a week and a half ago. This past Wednesday, my review of the Korean horror comedy film Zombie for Sale was published. You'll find those and all our other spooky reviews on our YouTube channel. Coming back to the interactive nature of Spooky Ventures, though, like our videos, share share them, and subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to look around at the actual website, SpookyVentures.com. We change the featured content on the page frequently, so it's not likely to be the same site on subsequent visits. With all of that out of the way, let's get on with the news. Starting things off this time, we've got a generally spooky news item to talk about. It's all about a video that has been trending. In it, a man seemed to capture a couple ghosts at the Gettysburg Civil War Memorial site. I wanted to include the video, but couldn't find a way to get in touch with the gentleman who shot it, so I'll include the link instead and add the video to our general spooky videos playlist. The video seems to show a couple spectral figures moving along among the two cannons that are on display there. I'm curious to know what you, the viewers, think of the video. Personally, it looks to me like CGI or even stop-motion imagery like Ray Harryhausen. I say that because of the way the things move. It really reminds me of some of his work. Now, all that said, I found another video on YouTube from seven years ago of the same spot, and it seems to show something that looks very similar moving between the cannons. Now, I'm not saying that it mean, proves it's legit or that it doesn't, but it is interesting that the two very similar videos of the same location were taken seven years apart by different people. Like I said, I'm interested to hear hear what your theories are. I'm still leaning towards hoax, but I'm open to other ideas. Have you gotten into the adult coloring book craze? If so, you might want to look for a series of coloring books called Beauty of Horror. They come from Alan Robert, and a new one, Beauty of Horror 4 Creature Feature, is out now. It's focused on coloring page images based on a whole host of horror movies and icons from They Live to Psycho, The Exorcist, and more. I have a couple items about spooky music this time around. The first one is included here in part because people might find it an interesting thing to do, but even more so it's a sign of our times. In Austin, Texas, for many children, Halloween means going to an orchestra concert of spooky music. Kids get their Halloween costumes on and make their way to check out the show. Well, things are different this year. Instead of an in-person concert, the Austin Symphony Orchestra will be hosting the show online on their website. So kids don't have to miss out, but can stay safe at the same time. I said that one of the reasons I wanted to include that event in this news segment was larger than the one event. I think it shows us that even in these strange times, there are ways to continue our traditions. It also means that if you have a favorite event for Halloween, don't just assume that it's canceled. They might have found a way to adapt to our new reality. If you're looking for a different kind of spooky music for your Halloween celebrations, perhaps Level Up will be your thing. Level Up is a female electronic dance music artist. She has a new EP out called Scared of the Dark, and it's designed to be spooky. Next, we'll turn our our attention to movies. Chances are you are familiar with Will Wheaton. You might know him from his childhood role in Stand By Me. 
Perhaps you first saw him on Star Trek The Next Generation. Maybe his recurring appearance is as a fictionalized version of himself on The Big Bang Theory were your introduction to his work. None of those instances are likely to have prepared you for his new horror role. In the new movie rent a -Pal, he plays a character that has been described as a demented Mr. Rogers. In true pandemic fashion, all of his parts for the film were done alone in front of one camera. The movie is currently streaming on video on demand and playing in select theaters. Another actor who has a Star Trek connection has been cast in an upcoming horror film. Malcolm McDowell, who played the villain in Star Trek Generations. Of course, he's got a much deeper and varied body of work than that, but he's now been cast for the lead role in a horror film called The Benefactor, where he plays a painter who moves into a home after the death of his wife, only to find that it is apparently haunted. The movie is in the early stages of development, so no release date is available yet. Turning to television, anthology horror is a concept almost as old as television itself. Streaming is one of television's newest innovations. Combining them, Hulu has a new series coming out called Monsterland, and the first trailer for the series is available for viewing now. The trailer looks both intriguing and creepy. All eight episodes of the series will be available for streaming on October 2nd. Now looking to something a bit more familiar for inspiration, Sci-Fi Network has announced that it will be producing a series based on the Chucky Living Doll character. I know there was recently a reboot of the movie series and that has met with mixed reviews. According to the announcement, the series is meant to give a deeper look into the character. Of course, when that character is a possessed homicidal doll, that look is going to be frightening. There is no information yet on when filming will begin or when the show will premiere, but it's something to look, keep your eyes open for. There are two final things I wanted to mention. First is happy birthday wishes to Stephen King, who turned 73 years old last Monday. Secondly, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the movie Death of Me, which opens next Friday, October 2nd. Given the current state of the movie industry, I'm not sure how widely it will be released in theaters. However, in addition to the theatrical release, it will be available on video on demand services the same date. Don't forget, we have a handy spooky calendar on the Spooky Ventures website at spookyventures.com. There you can find all kinds of dates of the spooky variety posted. Well, that's it for this time around. Be sure to come back soon for the next spooky news segment. I've been doing these every couple weeks lately. As we head into October, I might go back to weekly if there's enough news to warrant it each week. So I'll either see you in one week or two with a new segment. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and always remember to keep it spooky.
Spooky Ventures is the home for spooky content and spooky merchandise on the web. Check it out today at SpookyVentures.com. And remember, always keep it spooky.